Well, easy come, easy go. That was my favorite quilt of the ones I have, but I have a friend here. I don't know the Van Tilligen story, and I actually was going to look it up, but tell me. There was some kind of tragedy, and she just kind of threw herself into her work. And created and this created successful something. thing. I never knew there were so many varieties. And women in that started these ceramics companies back in the, you know, in the 30s and 40s, which is... I think it's so great because so many of the women in the early days were the decorators, but only a handful got to actually start their own company. So, right. yes, I thought that was a pretty amazing thing, and they're so cute. So, yes, please they're take them all. Cute. There's one more set sitting on top of that Pyrex. Oh, yeah, the little Dutch. The yes. Little Dutch. And he's really going for it, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, you know the Dutch. <laughs> I'm gonna be real brave. Okay, she's gonna be brave Ms. here. Mom wants me to pull this magic knob. Oh, yes, pull the magic knob, Misty. That's horrible. <laughs> That was, I mean, I, he was a little slow to pop up, so at least it wasn't like... He's not too horrible, but he's kind of chucky looking and gross. He is a little like Yes. Well, you I mean, are... I kind of like him, actually. I know, I sort of do, too, in a horrible way. You're, see, your bravery was rewarded. I wanted to show the very first YouTubers who came to the booth this morning. This is Amy and Irv and... Marla. Mom Marla from Yoso Boho, and of course she's got the shirt on, so we can show you that. I finished freelance stuff, and oh, that's great! Now I'm pretty much full -time so now it's you yeah. doing this. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah. What sort of stuff are you finding you like to sell? You've been doing this a couple of years now, right? Yeah, three. Three. three years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a little bit of everything. Yeah. I love glass and pottery. I love pottery. Pottery is probably number one. I yeah. do love pottery. Yeah, it just feels so good, and it's got this warmth to it. Yes. Oh. Yes, and I like the, I mean, I'm from the region, so I like the McCoy and the Roseville and all that, but I'm really loving the studio pottery. Oh, Anything yeah. Anything that's like artsy. Yes. It's so yes. interesting, and there's so many sleepers out there. I mean, there's oh stuff God. that we still don't know now is going to be really great yes. someday, and we yes. just need more scholarship. Do you know the studio potters in your area who worked? I'm learning them, who yes. worked? Yeah, yes. that's and so even important. on a national basis, because people will post something, and I'll say, oh, that's so-and-so, because I've seen it. And that's been awesome. That is so yeah. cool because there's so many studio potters and that's really what we need is all these message boards and groups to share information yes, until we all know because, um, you know, we know the Richard Sperry's and the, the Robert Maxwell's and, you know, the really the high-end old guard, but there's so many good things that were made in the 80s and 90s yes. in different places. and. Yeah. Uh, some of those are sitting in our houses and we'll yep. be glad we know. So, well, thank you for uh, studying all that for us because I'll never get to it. I need the help. <laughs> <laughs> you got to enough. Yes. <laughs> to quickly say hello to my friends from Fatbird Pines. Yay. Yay. I just turned around and said, I think I need to go help George. Oh, I appreciate that. Yes, we're, we're really kind of busy here. So I wanted to say hi, but we'll have to talk in a minute. Filming each other, filming each other, filming each other. <laughs> Aren't they great? They're just little 1960s core and I just think they're really fun. They usually come like, uh, oh, I don't know, four or six or eight to a set and they're all different colors and I get them every time I see them because people just love them and you just have a little snort out of them, like a oh, shot glass, but a little more elegant. I love the donkey. He, he came out of my mother's collection and that's a gola that's out of um, Spain and she found that years ago and oh. didn't know what it was and then we looked it up and we're so excited to find something new and they all have those little spring heads. How adorable. They are so cool. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, that needs to go with you. Okay. Well, look who we have here. I heard somebody say everything was 90% off, and I knew a rabble rouser was in the crowd. What a deal. It's so good to see all of you. I've got Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage, and I've got Barb from Winking Owl Antiques, and in the sun here, well, you can't really see her face, but we all know who this is. So. Ariana at the Withering Cottage. That's right. She's the Withering Woman. Yes. Here we are. It's my flipping van life. And Mike. Well and done. Mike. Very good. And uh, have I met you before, Mike? I think we've met once. I, I thought we did. I've bought from you in the past. I'm well swung on Instagram. Well swung. Oh, that's great. And um, I'm going to let all the obvious jokes go. <laughs> Well, and here is somebody else that I really enjoy, and she has her head down looking at jewelry, but this is Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. Hello, I'm so glad to see you. Oh my gosh, it's so great to see all of you. I'm just having so much fun. Well, you guys are all hanging out. I'm the one who has to work. Oh well. <laughs>
Well, and Amor Amy is here too. We are getting so many fun YouTubers and I'm so excited to see everybody here. Ah, unfortunately, I've got to work so I can't film a lot right now, but you're getting the picture at least. We're having fun. How's Antique Agenda doing? We met last year and it was so much fun and I watched a few episodes I, like I ever have time to do anything, but uh, what are you up to now? What's your, what's your channel like? Well, it has developed a little bit. I have done more shopping videos where I do a lot more talking. So I'm growing as far as my content videos. Excellent. I have also my chat show still with Angela on Monday nights. And now I am doing sales on Sunday night. And she's looking at something interesting right now, which is uh, I have a little half doll, but she has the legs and the legs. The legs. <laughs> well, these two very festively Halloween decorated people are Sugar Britches, sweet ass stuff if you know them from YouTube and their channel and look who they brought chocoletta <laughs> she is really truly horrifyingly scary <laughs> so it's perfect for halloween <laughs> so she's kind of your mascot who goes on your channel and she comes around with yeah, you now, huh? yeah we decided to bring her out to springfield oh that's awesome well hopefully we won't all be possessed afterwards yeah, <laughs> sometimes we wake up and she's crawled out of the basement so oh yes i'm sure well well or maybe we'll all be uh, addicted to sugar bridges so that wouldn't be bad either <laughs> And I see you found a, a noisemaker. Very fun. Yes. No pumpkin left behind. That is so that's great. The shiny bright doggos channel. Oh, yes. that's really cool. And then this shirt is just amazing. <laughs> I won't lose them, right? My wife made me wear it. It looks great. One way to keep track of them. Yes. And in case you folks are afraid that there isn't anything available for resale at a big show and that it's all going to be expensive, well, they have an entire cart full yes. of holiday related stuff. And I think, is this your first time into the car or the second? It'll be the first. It'll be yeah. the first, but yep. you're just about there. So yep. very we'll fun. Make a second trip to the ATM. Yeah, this this show will do it. I spent 1300 bucks yesterday in the lines before we oh even were boy. able to get in here. So it's not hard to do. One thing that's really great at being at a show is some people are so generous and they know I can't go out and shop. And Joyce, who is a viewer, sent me these two really beautiful little carnival glass pieces and said, I want you to find a good home for these and make a nice deal for another collector. And that was so sweet of you, Joyce. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. There's this great carnival glass acorn bowl from about 1910 and this nice imperial glass with the Dutch from about 1960. And we're going to see if we can find a nice home for them for you. So thank you very much well there is Dagny but she is busy talking hello there hi. yeah hi there hi, I'm Alex. it's Alex hello yeah, there but I am interested in this guy oh thank you isn't he cute yes I'll uh you know I got him right I'll do eight dollars on $8? that okay, yes awesome. I love his little dangly eyes can I say hi <laughs> yes you may hi each other. This is so meta right I know now. isn't <laughs> it isn't it yes exactly <laughs> tell me what your channel is it's BF Vintage BF Vintage yeah. awesome so and cool George, and I'm George it's so great to meet you <laughs> oh and there is Kate from <laughs> Follow that bug, vintage, okay. yes. Oh, so much fun. I'm so glad to be meeting these folks. This is gonna be a great time. And here is the lovely Hi. Jocelyn. And she is here. And I put a couple of things aside for her. And oh I think gosh. she likes them, which makes me happy. Things. Yeah, and I hear you're having a big paperweight yes, sale, which no I knew idea. 10 seconds which ago I found out when you told me. Yes, so this is great. This so, is perfect. oh, good. Well, I'm so glad. Well, yeah. that is uh, an artist that I only know about because of you. Yeah, Eckholt. Yes, and he's this is great. A gorgeous one. I love that opalescent. I like that too and yeah. the scattered bubbles and everything mm -hmm. and that it's not controlled. I think all of that is really fun. Yeah. And then this other awesome. one, I don't know this artist, but I think the work's really good. Yeah, and it's very similar to the occult, which yes. you pointed out, and I think is very true. Cool. It kind of looks like his deep sea. Oh. Have you seen his deep sea? I haven't, version? actually. It's, it's kind of similar in style, except the deep sea is kind of more abstract. It doesn't have these clean lines, oh. but it's a very similar work to that. Very cool. Well, thank you. That's wonderful information because I actually, no, I hadn't heard of this artist, but I thought it was good. So yeah. I'm glad you do too. And well, those are going to be at the paperweight they sale because they're hers yes. now. Well, we are having some fun here and Kate has got to put on the hat because if she doesn't, I will. Because the lady didn't read the tag on it and sold it to me for 10 bucks. Wow. It's Christian Dior. Fabulous. <laughs> That is wonderful. Only once have I picked up a hat like that and it turned out to be great. I got a Scaparelli hat once that way. Oh, I love it. That is awesome, though. 
feel like it goes really well with the hamburger yeah. purse. Like it's, it looks it's big burger it. energy. It's yeah. total <laughs> burger energy. <laughs> Nothing says Christian Dior like merch. burgers. We are having so much fun. There's a great crowd. This is the first day. We've got a bunch of YouTubers having a confab over here. And we've got a really great green sofa set over there and just a ton of stuff to look at. I'm stuck in my booth, but so many fun people have been coming that I've at least gotten to vicariously enjoy the show through them. And if you're enjoying this, please do hit the thumbs up to let us know. Please leave a comment. Please like and do subscribe if you haven't, because that's how we can let you know about future videos and when we're doing more fun things like this. I wanted to show you some of the YouTubers who came to my booth. There certainly were others, uh, other content creators and a whole lot of viewers. And it was so amazing and so much fun to meet everybody. I just love doing real world shows where all the stuff that we get to do together when we're online gets to happen in person. Well, it is foggy. It's a little cool. There's a few people out, but I am playing hooky and staying out of my booth for a little bit because it's a rare chance for me to get around and see what other people have. I got to show you a bunch of YouTubers who came to the booth yesterday and they all shopped and now there's a moment for it to be my turn. A disco ball. Is this an original made in Louisville? It's $75. Good small size. Yes, you and the horse you came in on. Well, this is a neat case. This is a ribbon showcase, and my friends just sold a ribbon showcase for $1,200. So you can see it has all the rails to hold the ribbons, and then you could pull them out by opening the little doors here. Ribbons were something that Gibson girls like to wear in their hair. So yes, you would have needed an entire display at the time. Here's a whole lot of nice Rookwood pieces, and they all seem to be priced in a reasonable range. The big console dish in the middle, the green is $195, the large face here, uh, $215. These are 1930s era pieces that are the molded wear, 20s and 30s and on. Here's the medium color green hull drip glaze. Until recently, I had someone who was looking for these pieces and he found them. And now here I am with a whole bunch right in front of me. Here is something we see a lot not in the box, but there's the McKee Company <laughs> box, and they did the glass bake line. And these little deviled crab baking shells were from the 1940s. Here's some of these lawnware pieces, these strange planters made into lamps in the 1970s. $30 each. They are starting to be collected. And like anything, when you have a bunch of them together, they're actually kind of fun. One thing being a dealer at this show is I've got to kind of keep my eye on the crowd. A lot of them are coming in from this direction. And as I start to see more and more, I will need to go back to my booth and reopen. But first I'm going to look at these cocktail shakers because the prices have gone up on these. And if his prices are reasonable, I'd like to get some. 35 for the one with the recipes. I mean, these are prices we're seeing now. 35, 45, 50 even. Great Triple alligators. Oh, and I like this one. Oh yes, this one is the Florida Souvenir with the big jaws open. That needs a little bit of touch up, but I think that for $15, it's just horrible enough it'll sell. Here is a funky, funky lamp that somebody made out of ceramics and little pieces of glass. I have a feeling it looks really fun on. It's very strange looking not turned on. I like the size and the shape of these two little lamps with these tiny shades. Two fifty for the pair, though. Well, there is the bargain of the show. A dollar each for Sharon Pink. I mean, even these days, these still sell for a lot more than that. All right, an amber swung vase and a little green one. But I like this piece because it's check glass and it's spatter. And it's got lots of color. However, it also had a bale it sat in because that little peg would not be enough to hold it up. So I'm going to pass on that. This place is so impossibly vast. <laughs> Look how huge this is. And so much to see. I mean, I'll never get through all of it. It would be hard for anyone, even with three days, to get through all of this. These folks have the Coca-Cola coolers and you can see the classic one here. And then you can see the 60s era ones in the aluminum. Things go better with Coke. That was a 1970s slogan. 
So we have a few generations of them here. Here's some pretty pieces of floral Roseville. So we saw a table full of Rookwood and now a table full of Roseville. Roseville right now is probably the cheaper deal. Cute little bittersweet base for 55. 75 on this. The prices have really come down to where it's a great thing for people to collect again. And I'm pleased to see that because I'm seeing new collectors taking it up. It always had such great shapes and designs. Here's the Carnelian drip glaze with the R mark in the ink stamp. That's another Roseville mark to know. Ceramic art studios like to do things in pairs. This one is the Lotus head vase and her mate Manchu. There's the Ceramic Art Studio from Madison, Wisconsin, marked from the 1940s. Well, this milk glass looks like it's seen better days, but it would clean up. There's a Fenton piece there, but this one has a Smith label on it. Over 50 years handmade milk glass, and look how the nubs are not quite as sharp. I do like these green print state glasses. I don't know what their prices are, but if they're at all reasonable, you know, $8. See, that's about what I get for them, though. So, nope, I guess I'm going to leave these. That's okay. They're entitled to make retail on things, too. They sure have a lot of stuff in here. A bunch of this Boot Indigo by Innarco. All the tableware pieces. Fenton Ruby Basket. Here's some more of this. These terracotta pieces with this interesting decoration where they would actually use a tool to sweep it up into the glaze up to create the design back in the 1960s i have a little tiny vase for sale right now i think it's really interesting where and i think as people start to catch on to it okay now this one says bulgaria i think this bulgarian pottery will become more popular with time because it's interesting to look at and the prices are cheap, only $20 on the teapot. Here is Monty Duck and his funny master with a quack, quack, quack he goes wobbling after. This one is English. A lot of these started in England, these child's dishes, and then the American companies followed suit and did similarly. Here's an 80s toy that's worth a bunch of money now. It's a mad ball. These were very weird at the time. And there you are, super mad balls. This one's foul shot. They were made in Taiwan, but they are a big deal now because they were so gargoyleish. And well, now people like that. Anna Molds makes every meal a party. That's cute. I've never seen that one before. Snoopy valve cap covers. Okay, that's oh for bicycles. That's still one of the silliest things I've ever seen. I've got to buy that. The little Aviva luggage tag. Have a great trip very handsome arts and crafts clock behind the snoopy stuff at 95 dollars a lot of fun childhood i recognize the campbell soup kids from knickerbocker were something you sent off for in the 70s there's the burger king oh my wardrobe malfunctions always assume these were all made in japan but this one says ohio pottery west pike of zanesville ohio they're well naughty that one's japanese and this one says you can cool her your hot button her old tub hmm. these are nice beads 65 though they know what they have they are italian and you can see the gold in them small size choker but good shape yes the blonde pixies are that hard to find they've got 65 on that japanese piece from the 60s but blonde ones just are not out there we're rare. Ironstone is definitely making a resurgence and it's not just Martha Stewart who's discovering it. It's a whole lot of people who are realizing that it looks really good in farmhouse style and white interiors. And so now we're seeing pictures priced at like 35 to 65 and that's more than they used to go for recently. And then here's some with some really neat transfers on them. There's some nice antique pieces in here. Uh, true antique. This one's nice with the purple transfer wear priced at 95 mulberry they have on there and sometimes these have maker names and information on the bottom and sometimes you have to look them up the Staffordshire potteries didn't always mark everything this frog attracted my attention because he's just got a fun glaze Jeffrey's Antiques that's a place we stopped on the way down here a set of square Brick Park Melmac dishes 65 this is something I wanted to show because we're used to seeing Hudson's Bay and the American companies, but this one is a Whitney Point. This one is made in England. 
And of course the Hudson's Bay were originally made for the English market, so they do have these striped blankets as well as we do, and the prices seem to be similar, somewhere in the $100 range for this. All right, let's see what we have down this row. A couple of Oxford pottery pieces here. I don't see the orange, it's usually blue. You can see Oxford wear, but it's very heavy on the glaze there. And this seems to be a nesting set with the lids. There's the little one inside, only $20. That seems pretty good. Oxford wear made in the USA. The hall windshield teapot and the polka dots is 32. Always love the polka dots. Cute little knotter set of pheasant shakers there. Little Joseph girl. So lots of fun, cute, familiar things here. Nothing's jumping out at me as being something I need to own though. There's a modernist sculpture called Jerusalem one by Air, and what an interesting figure holding Jerusalem in the arms. I assume that that's a representation of God watching over the faithful. It's really interesting. Have you ever been to see or seen on TV aquariums? Yes. Do you know the big turtle statues that you see? Uh huh. Oh, that's Delier. Okay. Wow, how interesting. It's a really interesting representation. And what is the medium? Bronze. It is bronze. Okay. And 24 karat. Ah, I see. Okay, so it's a hollow bronze. No, Very good. No, it's not a oh, it's not. Oh, that must weigh a ton then. Oh my goodness. So it's a big heavy bronze casting. Well, of course that makes sense. This would be too thin. I see. Wow, that's a beautiful, wonderful piece. He made 288 and broke the mold. That's amazing. Uh, uh, we can buy you wow. You can actually check online. It's a fantastic piece. That was so much fun to see something different. The oldest pieces in the show. Oh, yes. Oh, these are wonderful. Yeah, these are shipwreck salvage and Roman. Yeah, I haven't seen a nice old Roman glass piece like that in a long time. And you think, well, $170 seems so cheap for an antiquity, but you know, these are, these were fairly crude and simple at the time, but what an amazing find now. And these are older, these are Shabidi. Oh, are they really? Are Egyptian Shabidi. Yes, oh, very interesting. I haven't seen them in a long time either. May I pick one up? Oh, thank you, yes. Oh, this is great, yes. We don't really see true Egyptian antiquities very often. I've only held a handful over my career. This is a very neat piece and uh, so interesting with the glaze and here's another one up on top here and then another uh, roman glass perfume bottle or scent bottle very interesting things it's so fun to see things that are really ancient at a show because a lot of times we're not even seeing true antiques anymore it's travel cases from china and it looks like it's 19th century and they fold open and you've got your mirror here and then here is your place to keep all of your valuables and it's just interesting in the uh, way it's made it looks a little bit cruder because this is gosh dynastic or i mean we're talking 100 years old now so this is really cool yes all leather and it says early 1900 stagecoach trunk but it could even be late 19th century i would think wow look at the interior and the way it's all uh, cleaned up and uh, decorated inside that is really nicely done it's interesting that they would take so much uh, extra yeah well and they had to reinforce it from the inside because people would set things on it just like somebody did at one point this is really neat though the lady had at the bottom of her bag to sit and put her shoes on. Well, you'd have to Ah, uh, yes, because that's where she sat. Exactly. Well, with the, if you wanted to stretch that, I'm sure you could reshape it. But I think it's great. Just the story is good. I would leave it the way it is. 350. That's really cool. You have some really interesting things. I'm so glad I came down here. I'm a, I'm a couple booths down and I need to get open now. But I've been uh, putting it off because it was more fun to go around and look. My 1970s, my first 1970s piece. Yes, if you're going to buy a 70s lamp, the most garish owl lamp you can find is definitely the one. It's and Oh, it actually has. Oh, yes. Interesting. So Heinold, 1973. Well, you know, I just bought a big garish owl lamp and I took it to my next show and it sold in 20 minutes. So <laughs> you will find a buyer. I like their space very much. It was really fun to see some different things. And, oh, look at this little flower frog arranger. She's very cute. I always like the little nude dancers. Oh, this is cool. Wow, you are really finding interesting stuff. A collapsible men's travel train, uh, train travel shaving stand. So, yes, this would all fold down, and that would fold down. 
comes out. So you basically are down to something about six inches square or eight inches square, and then you've got everything you need for your travels. That's pretty cool. 145. It's an unusual piece. You don't see those very often anymore. And the collector who first bought this back in the 70s paid that for it. Firm. So this is a pretty good deal at 145 I think. Beautiful chair. $420. The smallest fainting couch ever. Tiny fainting couch. That's very cute. <laughs> they really do have some interesting things in this space. I'm glad that uh, I ran in. So you bought out a pharmacy in Xenia? Xenia. I got everything in the attic. Oh. These are from 1800s to 1960. Yeah. Including... Oh, arsenic. Wow. And that's $100 because that's the that's the one that everybody wants. It's poison. It's it's not good for you, but it uh, definitely will uh, do th nice things to your glass if you're a glass producer. So this is really a fun collection. And wow, there's so many different varieties. Digitalis. I have a friend who might like some of these. I'll have to tell him he needs to get over and take a look. Kava Kava. Oh, that still has it in it. I better not tip that. Eli Lilly, Indianapolis. Oh, somebody pushed the thing in. Oh, shoot. Is that why? Yeah, they uh, smelling it. Everybody's been smelling stuff. It's weird. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then this guy, we've got, all, we've got his uh, paintings, but we didn't bring him out here. That's all 1960s metal pop art. They're really interesting. Yeah. Who is this? Ward. His name was Ward. His name was Ward. Is this somebody local? Uh, yeah. We bought out his estate. And uh, he's been in the nursing home for a while. Oh gosh. But yeah, so he did painting, he did fabric, and he did metal. And he did metal. And some of these are really interesting and a couple of them are really likable. Like any sculptor, you know, you're going to like some of the work better than others, but I actually think some of these are really fun. And uh, oh, how interesting. Did he ever display anywhere or? I didn't ask the for Cast iron candle holders you see, but this one with the figural and then with the serpent and then to have the centerpiece, that's really neat. And I like the glass base even. That definitely looks like something Victorian. $60. I mean, for somebody who likes this sort of decor, that's really not expensive, especially as old as these are. This is a pretty interesting collection. I think these are part of ink wells. A couple of them. You know, you put the tip of there yes. and then you'd have the candle to... The candle to right by, yes. Where you keep your tips. Oh, I see. So you can change over, right. Oh, and then you can see in the light and then your ink well would be the stand in the middle, right. That makes more sense no longer a city leaf drop. I don't really know what that means. This is cool. Kyle from Chestertown, New Hampshire. Keys made 225. Cincinnati Burger Bow. Was you ever in Cincinnati? <laughs> That's fun. It's a thin gauge, so it's probably a 50s era, but it's a great looking little piece and they are asking 295 on it really anything interesting in old beer, especially obscure brands that we don't see anymore. Just going for a small fortune. The National Joy Smoke, hmm, I think some other things that have become legal recently might be the National Joy Smoke now. Pennsylvania Turnpike and a bunch of other cool felt pennants. This is a good camel thermometer. Anything that's three-dimensional gives extra dimension and extra value. 225 on that. Here are those lawnware lamps in table lamp form, in color. These are extra spiffy, and they are asking 69 each on those. Here's a Murano piece. There would have been another piece to go with it. That's why they only have 3250 on that one, because they could have been used as bookends. Generally, it's a pear and an apple. Cranberry vase seems like a pretty good deal. I think that is Italian. It has some bubbles. It's not great quality. Viking compote is 39 and this little day glow critter is 1250 made in Mexico paper mache. Very fun and bright and festive 1970s. Neat pair of bookends here for $85 with the celluloid heads 1920s or 30s. This particular one uh, has the gentleman trying to get to the top of the stack of books. I think he might need a bookcase. This has been restored, but a great Keystone Airmail airplane. It does have the original wheels and the original propeller. A lot of these have rusted and need to be repainted, and they chose Happy Pastel colors, and they are fun. I'm not finding these for cheap prices anymore. This one's priced at 85 and a lot of people are using these in display now, so 
We used to get them for 25 or 30 and sell them for 60, but those days may be over. This is not your average church percolator. This one's really fun. It's West Bend, the, yes, the company that made the ubiquitous Penguin Hot Cold Keeper made this. It's only $25, so it's a little damaged on the top, but it's a great flower power look from the 70s. Somebody took an old radiator surround from a Whippet, which was a Willys Overland small car that they made in the 1920s. And I like that it's turned into a shelf. That's pretty neat. Here is a really neat old stove insert. This is going to be 1890s floral estate, and it's really cool that it's got all of the, uh, it's got the glass jewels, it's got the tile work. This one is not cheap because, well, you don't see these inexpensively very often. It had a single burner and the vents here, they have it priced at 2000 but I can't say I've ever seen another one. This is the strangest, meanest looking little parrot nutcracker. $45. I have not seen the parrot before. And nutcrackers can be pretty good. I mean, if this cleaned up, I'd be, I'd be tempted just because it's unusual. Well, this is one of these things where it does pay to not just buy on impulse. I look these up, they're really great. And actually the price they have on it is about right. I'm surprised I haven't seen one before because I would have thought it'd be more expensive. But just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that someone else somewhere else hasn't. So don't go just on your own intuition. We have so much information now. You have the option of doing some looking before you make decisions. They have a bunch of interesting nutcrackers though, this rocket shape. This is the Perfection from Waco. They've got 28 on it. That's what I've sold them for before. These little ones that you sort of rest on your thigh and smash. This is fun. Bay is for alligator with jaws like steel. His skin is so tough that a bump he can't feel. And actually it's Hazel Atlas. There's the HA on the bottom. That's cute for $15. If you're collecting these bicycle license plates from 1953 that came in the boxes of Wheaties, well, here is your entire set. This is what you're looking for. There are 48 states, so no Alaska and Hawaii. And the ones that I notice are a little harder to find, just like in real life, are the ones that have shapes. The one shaped like Kansas is a little hard to find, and the one shaped like Tennessee. They did actually include a 49th, which is District of Columbia. And here's a little history that they have about it. And it's basically talking all about license plates in Ohio and how they came to be. So someone made this very fun display using the bicycle plates back at the time and how fun to have an instant collection. They want 400 for the whole thing. Boy, there are a ton of dealers this way too, and I've never even traveled this way during this show before. Lots of road signs, $20 each or two for 30 is a pretty good price. I might need a couple of stop signs because they do get people to stop in your booth. And there it is, speaking of West Bend. We knew we'd find one somewhere take a look through one more place and then I'm going to have to try to get back here after I open up and sell some stuff. But now that it's getting warmer in my booth, I really am going to have to open. Roseville three-piece set again in the bittersweet. This seems like a great price for $50. Little bit of a glaze skip. That's a factory flaw, but that might make it a hard sell. And then the water lily piece here. 95 on that. A bunch of gonder pottery. These are pieces we see pretty typically from them. These small pieces look like they could be Rick Wise Carver. Let's take a look. There's Sitting Bowl. And it does have a pottery name on the bottom that we can't quite read. Let's try one of the bigger pieces. Ooh, isn't she pretty? We was Handmade Pottery 1980 Actors. Well, this is interesting. I'm not familiar with this. I really did think it was Rick Wise Carver. And they were doing a lot of things that looked like early 20th century arts and crafts ceramics with a lot of Native American feature. Well, I did a little looking and Weehoa sands are related to Rick Wives Carver. Now that makes sense and the prices make sense too. Lots of fun little banks. Every kind of piggy bank you can imagine. This little guy here is priced at 30. This one here I see sometimes is an advertising piece. That's a cute little Humpty Dumpty there. And 
it says Alice and Philco Land because these were advertising for Philco radios. We'll see if they know that. I don't see a price on this one. The seal is cute. I haven't seen a seal before. I wish it was a little better decorated at the top, but I like it. And then these little caroler pigs, they've got 20 apiece. So I'm thinking the Philco Land might be similarly cheap, and if that's the case, I might buy it. Let's see what this one is. Oh, see, they've got 40 on the other one. So no, I think they know what they've got. Cute pieces, though. And then here is a whole lot of a lot of different American potteries. The McCoy Frog it definitely jumps out. But we have a bunch of Shawnee pieces in here. I like the Globe vase. A bunch of Royal Copley here. Their prices are all fine. None of them are bargains. You do see the Spaniels more often. That's why they're only 15 each, even though they're cute as can be. These elephants are a little harder to find, especially with the polka dots. Alright, bro. We'll see you soon. As popular as Jadeite is in glass, I'm surprised that the blue Delphite doesn't sell for even more. 12 each on the little bowls. 28 on the serving bowls. I had forgotten. 15 on these plates and about 20 on the dinner plates. So I guess those are about the right prices. But you compare it to these bowls at $20 a piece and you realize that the Jadeite definitely sells for more at this point. Nice Fire King pitcher for 42. Lots of galvanized, lots of farm stuff. You'll definitely see old cabinets and pumps and coal buckets and this sort of thing in spades at this show because we're in that part of the country. I bought a radio here on Thursday and I sold it on Friday. So today is Saturday. Can I find another one? I would love to get the Transoceanic Zenith here, but they have an idea what that is and they have it priced accordingly. Okay, now I really have to go open because I am seeing a crowd developing on our lane. Lots of oil lanterns. These two-tone ones are utility lanterns that they made a lot of in the mid-20th century. And they're cool looking, but you'll see those over and over. So Amy is back and look what she's wearing. I'm so happy. I'm so it's happy too. You can't really get in on it, but it's so sparkly. Ah, uh, yes, very good. Well, I, I thank you very much. I'm thank glad you. you loved it. I got it actually... Uh, where did I get that? I got it at a show in Michigan and it was just meant to come here, I guess. So yes, it, it looks was great on you. I didn't you even were... pay for it. I, I, I didn't even give you money when I had it on. Well, it's so much fun and uh, we have a couple other people here. This is Miss Connie, who I got to meet last week at Rosie's yes. Auction House yes. show, which was so fun. And she's down here for her birthday weekend. Having fun? Yes. Good. And this is, uh, you, uh, you call yourself Tuesday, but what's, yes. your, what's your site? My site is Tuesday's Fun Finds. Very good. Yeah. And you're on Whatnot. Yes, I'm on Whatnot, and I do have a YouTube channel. And you have a YouTube channel. Oh, well, I'll have to check it out. That's yeah. great. I love uh, jewelry, so I'm in the jewelry category. Yeah. And then I also enjoy the vintage decor category. I've Excellent. got on there. Okay, yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's very and, nice um, to meet you. It's very nice to meet you, too. And, and thank you very much. I'm glad you like those earrings. Thank you so much. <laughs> and the brooch. The brooch. And the brooch. Can't forget the brooch. Can't forget yes. the brooch. Beautiful. <laughs> I am so excited because Rob and Renee and Katie are viewers and they have come to do a show for the very first time and I'm so excited to introduce you this is Robin on the right and Katie on the left yes. and um, what has it been like doing a show for the first time good bad indifferent a lot of work, a lot a lot of work. work. it is real work especially at the extravaganza for sure. yes because there's a jillion yeah. people and a lot to keep up with yes but it's been a blast really. oh it's been really cool I'm yes. so glad yeah. That's terrific, and it's your first time. Tell me some of the lessons you've learned, because when you're a dealer for the first time, there are, and, and you don't even know until they come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when setup day is a day that you have class, skip class. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. you guys pulled in late when I was just finishing setting up, yep. and I felt so bad for you. It's like, the, oh, dark, uh, <laughs> 8 o'clock at night, and you're just starting, but, uh, but it turned out to be worth it? Yes, absolutely. Definitely. What have you liked the best about it? The people have been so yeah. really wonderful. Yeah, isn't it surprising yes. how great they are? I mean, you know, yes. sometimes they want to wheel and deal, but it's about yeah. having fun and loving this stuff. So you like, always have yeah. something to talk about. Yeah, they're buying things for the most part because, you know, it has a meaning for them or they yeah. really appreciate the item a lot, you know, and that, 
more a deeper level than just what you see a deeper Walmart level than just yeah. oh it's cute and yes. i'll buy it and throw it away when i'm sick of it in six months yeah that's yeah. what's so great about this and that's why this stuff has stood the test yeah. of time sometimes yeah. spawns family stories or this reminds me of an event or my grandmother or whatever it might be and, and it's so yeah. great yeah you kind of get to know them in some way that's a little more personal and i just really like that about yeah. it and from a functional standpoint one of the biggest things i've learned because I've not done anything retail related remotely before, is that lo the location of the item is such, makes such a difference. Yeah, it really does. I noticed you've been moving things around and that's Constantly. so smart. I see things on your table I didn't see this morning actually. Yeah. And it's really great. And I'm actually gonna go around and take a look at what you've got. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm so excited because honestly, part of the reason I started my channel besides giving out information is we were hoping, we knew there were lots of customers, but we were starting not to have enough dealers because a lot of us folks have been doing this a while and a lot of the baby boom and their parents are retiring. So it's just so great to have somebody give it a try. And I'm so glad you liked it. And hopefully you'll come back again. And it's so cool you're right across from me. I know, yes. <laughs> we took a shot and no we had a booth right across. So that was, that was very helpful. We, we felt like we were amongst friends from the jump. So well, that, that awesome. does really help. And it's nice when we can share things. She brought over a Blanco oh. vase in a really <laughs> great color and said, someone offered me $30, I think it's better. And I said, put 65 on it and what'd you get for it? 65. I'm so thrilled. <laughs> the next customer that came up. That's so, so awesome. Because of the color. Yeah. She was a Blanco person. She recognized that, that we were exactly that right. That jonquil yellow is really hard to find. Yeah, so beautiful. That's so, awesome. Thanks. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, yeah. this is just so much fun. I'm going to go around and look at your booth now. Wonderful. Thank you, George. And we want to know what vitamins you take because we look way more tired. <laughs> there you go. I take C and D and E and zinc because I'm around a lot of people and they say those are good things to take if you're around a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. <laughs> thank you. And thank, thank you, you for all. I, I can't tell you the number of people that know you and watch your channel and we're just going in depth about how much they've learned. From you. Oh, so I'm so glad. Well, thank you. I will because I love it and I'm glad other people do too. And one other thing I'll say, it's really fun to do shows. If you've ever given it a thought, uh, you know what? If I'm at a show, ask to set up near me like they did. I'd be happy to have more neighbors and I'd be happy to help any of you out who want to get into this and give it a try because it really is a lot of work, but it's fun work. And you know what? It's actually kind of lucrative too. And the best part is that we can sell dozens of items without having to pack anything, invoice anybody, ship anything, and we get to meet them in person. So there is a really cool aspect of it. This uh, outfit from Chicago are shopping because there's some great class here, but there's also this really lovely porcelain bowl. It looks like an RS Prussia blank because of all the ornateness, but the bottom isn't bowed out in the same way. They have five of these uranium glass. Aren't those cool? I just like that they're all uniform. I don't know what you would do with them, but I could just see them somehow under a black light in a stack. This is an interesting piece to me. This is uh, textured and it looks to be Satsuma wear from Japan. Pretty decorative piece. I'm so excited for them because they said they have had a really good show and you know we don't discuss uh, numbers per se, but they are doing almost as well as I'm doing and that's so great because they they're able to price this right because they are thrifters so they really have done very well I like this piece a lot I like the old phone too from the 70s of course and the brass clock looks like an old French clock but it's definitely newer hmm I might be shopping I'm going to peer over their shoulder while they're looking at the glass because some of it might disappear. I just wanted to take a... That's a great piece, that basket, the the Fenton with the black trim. Uh, black trim is really hard to find. I mean, that's, that's a great color. They have a neat hard stone plant here. These are really selling well again. They were popular in the 60s and 70s, and they seem to be popular again now. It's a whole ton of work. All those had to be wired together, and it's Peking glass, which we... Uh, used to call this style of glass out of China and it's just a pretty piece. They also have a carved puzzle ball. Fortunately this is not in ivory so it's not something we have a restriction on selling. I love this frog. I'm not sure who did this particular frog but it sure has a good look to it. Look at the alabaster or marble phone. This is another 70s novelty phone where people started being able to own their own phones. Of course, there was a ton of innovation. All sorts of really cool phones came about. I sold my cat string holder today. They still have the guy with the top hat. 
Here's this little caddy with the dog. It's very cute. You put your brush in the back for his tail. <laughs> These are fun. These look like they're uh, Japanese from the 50s or 60s. Not everybody's willing to be on camera, but I asked and I wanted to introduce you to this young lady because she is somebody that you might know from the chats. I love meeting the viewers in the real world. And this is Sean Blevins. And she has been a lot of help to a lot of us YouTubers. She's moderated. She sends auction listings to us. She helped me run a show once um, remotely. I don't even know how you did it, but it was great <laughs> and I needed the help. And um, so anyway, when you see Sean Blevins out there because she likes doing this and she's on a lot of channels and here she is. Hi guys. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. George is such a great guy. Oh, uh, well, we Love appreciate you. you too. Thank you. So we get to talk shop here and figure things out. These are both Whiting and Davis and this one's a newer one because it's got the snap catch and the screen print, but it's really nicely done. Um, I would probably price that around 50 to 75 if it were mine even though it's a newer one because they're still in business and they still make great stuff and then that one yeah this one is again a little later because it's got the plastic zipper rather the rather than the original kind but it is a whiting and davis and you know i'd say probably 25 or 30 on that one that one's a little yeah. easier to come by okay thank you wow. Yes, there was a George Bush puppet and they would box each other, but the George Bush puppet was gone. So I only have, oh, you, you've got that down. <laughs> now, here is a cool set. It was very popular in the 60s and 70s to do sets of glasses that talked about horseless carriages because these were the antique cars of that era. Now, the cars from that era are as old as these were then, which is hard to believe, but they've got the entire set, including the cocktail shaker. And it's got the stopper, which is very important. And the stopper opens, which is even more important. And this comes off with a little difficulty, but there'd be a strainer there. But it all seems like it will work, which is the important part. I like that set. I'll have to ask them about that. I have to say there's a few things here I would be happy to own. They've got the Spanish lace with the violets in the snow painting and the silver crest with the violets in the snow. I always like this is this hull. It's the Sueno Tulip. It's just a little tiny bud vase, but I just always thought the tulip was such a cute pattern for them. This is Copper Top Farm, and what a lovely place. I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. Well, I was in a pinch because my usual Saturday night lodging fell through, but thankfully, Jocelyn from Crazy Lamp Lady and Dagny from Flying Pig Thrifts were so kind and they invited me to stay with them in the extra room in this recently renovated farmhouse that is now an Airbnb. And what a great place. I think we're one of the first groups to ever stay here. And this is owned by the people who have Heart of Ohio Antique Mall. And because of that reason, it is full of interesting antiques. And I can't wait to walk around and take a look at some of them with you. It's really fantastic that they are trusting us to be around these antiques. They have asked us to leave the doors shut as they ask all the guests to do. So we will respect that, but we'll show you everything we can. Pretty Lamp, that's a more recent shade. Look at all this wonderful carving though. They have all these clock shelves and wall shelves. This one has a lantern on it, but they have all these neat deer carvings on them. You'll see them throughout the house. The corner cabinet is American. It's going to date sometime to probably 1860, 1870. It has the wavy old glass and it is just a fine piece and it is full of interesting stuff. We'll see if we can see any of it through the glass since we're not supposed to open these. There's some copper kettles. I've had people lately really interested in copper again and so I'm trying to look for more pieces to show. The Black Forest sconces with the carved deer are really something because usually the antlers are broken. Cute little lamp in the corner there. A nice Mission Oak rocker needs a new pad. I really like this piece. This looks like a Swedish trunk from the late 1800s. A lot of people would bring all their possessions over on a boat from Scandinavia in something very similar to this. And look at the painting and the detail on it. It's really something. We'll take this off so you can see the flowers, the toll painting. This is just very, very nice work and so detailed. It was interesting that they would, saw the trunk as such an important piece of their furnishings that they would embellish them in this manner rather than leaving them plain. There was a guy wearing a set of these shopping around the lines on Thursday. 
The guys from Heart of Ohio did a lot of traveling through Europe shopping in their uh, earlier years, and so they brought some really fun things. I mean, that is a great little bronze, although watch those snapping turtles. Hmm, that could be delicate. I like the old barrel crock there, the number two. I believe that's a European shape. This is definitely European. This is a Scandinavian, probably Swedish wedding cabinet. A nice little corner piece done sometime probably in the 19th century. And again, it would have all sorts of embellishments to make it pretty and interesting and a focal point. So nice to see somebody who appreciates antiques renovate a house. Look how they left part of the original wall exposed so you could see what it was like when it was an old farmstead. Such a pleasure to stay at a new Airbnb that isn't full of Ross Dress for Less leftover decor. This is a genuine Victorian Rubina edged uh, trumpet vase from the 1880s or 90s. Look at the cute little churns. Such gracious hosts if you are staying in Springfield. Copper Top Farms and Flowers is the name of this place. Uh, so grateful to the fellows at Heart of Ohio for letting us stay here. So grateful to Jocelyn and Dagny for having me here. And I can't wait to see all of you here. So make plans for next May. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.